Exercise 6. In this exercise, we take a look at some of the functionality with Creo and creating two-dimensional drawings from your 3D models. So let's go ahead and go to Open, and from the Creo or CAD 105 Basics sample files, find Exercise 6, the part, and hit Open. Once the part file is in, let's now go to File, New, and select Drawing. And call this E6. Go ahead and call it E6 and hit OK. At this point, it's going to give you uh, the ability to use templates or empty with format or empty. Uh, you can use any of these templates, especially just the A underscore drawing or B. However, um, if you're in the classroom environment, let's go with our empty with format and browse and find the A format. And hit open and hit OK. I just need to resize this to fit the screen. This is just uh, due to the recording software I have. Okay, and now we can see that we have a template. Let's go ahead and insert our very first part. You can either right click on the screen, you just have to hold it down for about two seconds, and there's the ability to go ahead and uh, insert a general view, or you could just go up here to general view. Just hit no combined state, hit OK. And now left click to drop in a view. Now, when you drop in the first view, you get this dialog box and it allows you to change some things around. First of all, we want a front view orientation, so just double click on front. And secondly, if we go to scale, it's a little bit on the small size. Uh, it tries to automatically use an algorithm that fits it to where it can fit the three views nicely within the drawing size given. But let's go and bump that up a little bit to 0.2. And you can hit Apply. You'll see it will increase the scale. Then go to uh, View Display. Instead of following the, the, the format of Shaded, let's go with um, No Hidden. And the Tangent Edge Display, set that to Phantom and hit Apply. And now you could go ahead and hit Close. If you zoom up to this view, go ahead and click on that scale. We don't really need that, so just hit delete on that scale text. And if we want to move this view, you have to go over here to the left, upper left, to lock view movement. It actually turns off the lock that was on there. So, I'm sorry, I reversed it. I had to click on it again to turn it on, and then off again. All right, so here we could just grab it and drag it anywhere you like. Now what we're going to do is, while that view is still selected, Go to Projection, click on Projection, and drag off this view here. You could go ahead and click on this view again, go to Projection, drag off a top view. Okay. And now, over here, somewhere in the open area there, just right click and we'll insert a general view again. Just hit OK, left click to drop it, and we do want the isometric view that we're getting there. And again, under scale, if you want, you could use a custom scale. Just remember, delete the note afterwards if you want to. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and hold control. Click on the three views that are shaded, holding control, and then release control, and then right mouse button click on one of them. And Actually, uh, that's not exactly what I wanted here. Hold a second. Uh, hold control, control, select all three, and then double click on one. And then over here, you'll get the drawing view options. And we could go ahead and select no hidden and go with the center uh, phantom lines. Hit apply. And it didn't take on that one, so we'll just help it along here. No hidden phantom. Then you could go ahead and move that up out of the way. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to create a section view with this. So for section views, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and turn on your uh, datum display, so your, your plane here. Now you can create the, the section view from the model or right here. There's two ways. Um, if you want to create it here, just uh, zoom in and out, zoom up on this with those datum planes on. And you could go ahead and we'll unfold the view. 
So go to projection, click on this view and drag it up. And then go ahead and double click on it. Find sections, 2D cross section, hit the little plus symbol. And over here you have some options. Just hit done, type in A for section A, hit the green check mark, and I'll select this front plane that appears over here, the actual text, and hit apply. And it sh you should see the cross hatching appear in here under view states. Uh, actually, I think we're good. We can go ahead and just hit close. Oh, you know, actually, I'm sorry, view display. Make sure it's set to no hidden and tangent edges phantom. And then you can turn off your planes. If you leave the planes on, they will print out on your drawing. Once you zoom out, it will actually change the actual uh, geometry there. Go ahead and relocate this um, section AA text. If you want to change the hatching, you could double click on actually any line of the cross hatch. It brings up the this menu over to the right, and you could change the angle, the spacing, um, the offset, different options. All right, now we're going to go ahead. Um, we need to add the section arrow. So you click up here, select the view. Oops, actually, let me uh, did not want that. Let me double click that. Thinking the wrong thing here. Click on this view, the section view, then right mouse button click and add arrows. Click on the view you want to add the arrows to. If you need to adjust these, you can always grab the, the arrow head and drag them in so they're not so wide. Find those. Okay, the next type of view we want to add is an auxiliary view. Find the auxiliary view tool up here, select this edge, and drag off an auxiliary view. Again, under view display, and this could be set up as a template so you don't have to set these up each time, but right now it's good practice. There's our auxiliary view. All right, as far as views go, that's about it that I wanted to go through right now. Oh, there's detail view. I forget the detail view. Let's go ahead and click on detail. You click in the region that you want to add a detail view, like on an edge. And then click at the 12 o'clock and go all the way around counterclockwise till the 3 o'clock. And then middle click, and it will create that circle there. Now left click to drop the view in. Again, rearrange the text. Make sure no views are overlapping any of these things. Okay, now as far as dimensioning goes, you can add dimensions really the way we've been adding for the last semester, and that's under the Annotate tab. And so, for example, we have Dimension, and you could just select Edges here, top to bottom. A middle click and it drops it in. And then on the menu manager, just hit return. Now we see that uh, that added a dimension, but there's another way you could add dimensions to it. You could retrieve dimensions. Let's make a little bit more room. Now, if you go to show model items, a little flashlight here, you could click on that. And then you have the ability to um, show all different types of things, datums, and surface finish symbols, and things like that. That could have been added into the model during its creation. But in this case, we just want to click on this view. And we'll see dimensions appear. Some of them we want, some of them we don't want. Like here, I can just click on what you don't want. Or actually click on what you do want, I should say. So we'll take that. We'll take the 4.75. We'll take the 34 degrees. And that's about it. And you could go ahead and hit Apply. and cancel. So there they are. If you don't want an extra dimension, you can always click and delete it. But this is kind of a nice way of dropping in dimensions that you might want to see on your print. If you double click on a dimension, you have the ability to change its properties. You could add tolerance display, which actually uh, you have to set that up too for it to show in the little um, options there. And then under here, there's different types of uh, 
options. You could add text. You could change the note style. Things like that. Now if you want a dimension located in a different view that might be more adequate, like for example this view, maybe I want that 34 degrees in there, I could go ahead and click on the dimension one time, then right click, and there's an option to move items to view. Now you can't see it, it's off of your screen here, but it's just underneath me. So I click on move items to view, and then select the view I want it in, and it will move it. All right, now adding some additional views. For example, if you go to the dimension tool, if you click one time in an edge and then middle click, it drops it in as a radius, if it's a radial object. If you click two times on an edge and then middle click, it'll show it as a diameter. It's a little hard to get used to initially, but uh, it comes out Eventually, it's not too bad. Then you could uh, move these around. Just middle click a couple times or click on layout and it will allow you to move the dimensions. All right. Now, to add notes, go to annotate and there's the note tool. And we'll just click in this lower left corner. Actually, the, sum the menu manager ap appears. And we could say we don't want a leader, and we just want to hit make note. Click where you want to drop the note, and then go ahead and type in the value. In this case, I'll call it exercise six. Hit the green check mark, and hit enter on your keyboard. Then on the menu manager, when you're done, just hit done return. And that completes making uh, some of the basic drawing tools, or using some basic drawing tools in here. Uh, there are options down here for adjusting the scale. Actually, if you want to change the scale across the board, you can double click on that and type in a different value. And that completes this exercise.